enjoying Valentine's Day with a special spread or in the spa. Plus, a day in Delaware Water Gap. And the returning grant program funding projects in the Poconos. And some food to pair with that wine experience. How to find bald eagles on the Delaware this time of year. Plus, where you can find more than 1,000 pieces of art from 70 artists under one roof. And the agro legacy of the Northern Poconos. One farmer's story in a series beginning on this episode of Pocono Mountains Magazine. Hello everyone, welcome to the February edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine. I'm Brianna Strunk and we'll check in with co-host Jim Hamill in just a bit. Love is in the air this month and there are plenty of ways to celebrate Valentine's Day in the Poconos. Here at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions, its honeymoon suite even pays homage to the iconic heart-shaped tub founded right here in the Poconos. Our region was once regarded as honeymoon capital of the world and romance is still alive and well here. We have a great show coming up for you this next hour, but first, let's check out how the Poconos have been making the news lately. Rev your engines. Leonard Skinner is coming to Poconos Park for the Lost Highway Motorcycle Show and Concert. The revamped concert venue in Bushkill had new life breathed into it for Cowboy Luau last year. And this May 19th through the 21st will host Skinnerd, Marshall Tucker Band, and more. Head to LostHighwayShow.com for more on the weekend of motorcycles and music in the Poconos. WBRE TV covered this ribbon cutting at Blue Mountain Resort for the new Main Street Express. The high-speed six-person chairlift can transport 3,000 guests per hour, and the trip up the mountain takes less than five minutes. It's called Ski Text. It's a communication texting platform where users can ask questions and get information about select ski resorts. WNEP-TV featured the new Ski Text service, free for skiers and snowboarders, at two resorts in the Pocono Mountains this season. Shawnee and Ski Big Bear are the first two mountains to use the service, which helps guests stay up to date on snow reports, events, and food options, and plenty more. Find out more at PoconoSki.com. We are here. We're still planning to do things throughout the course of the spring. We still have events going on. WFMZ-TV reports that small businesses in Delaware Water Gap are open, despite a nearby road closure and detour, which could last through the summer. We'll check out all this small town has to offer, coming up in just a bit. Winter is still in full swing, and at this point, you might be craving summer weather. So why not indulge in an experience that'll have you thinking about warmer times? Savor summer. This over-the-top setup is what you'll get when booking an outdoor or indoor picnic any time of the year with picturesque luxury picnics. So instead of just your simple sit on a grass picnic, you have a whole experience and you can do this for all your special occasions, bachelorette parties, birthdays, anniversaries, and we do proposals as well. This deluxe Valentine's package at Body Works Wellness Studio in East Stroudsburg includes a lavish picnic in the yoga studio, paired with a two-hour couples massage and salt cave session. Ah, romance and relaxation. It's really exciting because now you have the luxury picnic experience, and now you can pair it with a luxurious spa package or wellness package. Make your picnic pop by choosing the perfect color scheme. You can also select add-ons like a bubble tent, games, paint supplies, light up letters, and more. Enjoy the experience in your own home or backyard in the Poconos, at an Airbnb, even from a partnering business such as Second District Brew Farm or Sorrenti Family Estate. I partner with an amazing balloon decor artist. I partner with a live strings band. So if you're doing a proposal and you want to have some violins playing. You would marry me, please. <laughs> you know yes. I also partner with some photographers in the area, videographers as well. We just did a proposal with a videographer and 
it literally be became a movie. I partner with some bakers, uh, people who do charcuterie boards. So, you know, it really enhances the entire experience. Owner Gina Marie Rosado was born and raised in the Poconos, then moved to New York City for college. Let's go. Afterward, she packed up everything and drove cross country to Los Angeles to pursue a career in television production until the pandemic forced her to move back home a year later in 2021. Gina Marie faced a challenging time trying to figure out what's next in life. Then one day, her friend sent a photo of a luxury picnic. And she was like, this is really cool. And then I said, wow, that is really cool. And I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna bring this to the Poconos. Her love for designing and event planning has led to a blossoming business. And now Gina Marie feels at home in more ways than one. And I get to do things for people, create these experiences and these moments for people that I, I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And they get to take those memories for the rest of their life. And there are plenty of ways to celebrate Valentine's Day here in the Poconos, from one-of-a-kind experiences like this to fine dining, romantic resorts, even a spa getaway. Isn't that right, Deanna? Yeah, Brianna, love is in the air. And whether you're looking to book a romantic getaway, a relaxing girls weekend, or you just need a little zen and self-care, which we all need, I'm about to show you two of our amazing spas in the Poconos with a little history, of course. Did you know the first spa existed in ancient Egypt? And a Roman thermal bath was modeled after hot springs in Bath, England around 70 BC. But today, the word spa has a different meaning. They are sought out to rebuild and rejuvenate the body. Day spas have become incredibly popular, and we have some of the best right here in the Pocono Mountains. Many destination resorts in the Poconos offer different experiences that allow you to relax and lessen the pressures of our daily lives. This is the Lodge at Woodlock. It's a beautiful destination resort that offers top-of-the-line cuisine, luxurious rooms, mind and body experiences, and massage and spa services you'd expect at any high-end resort around the world. So everyone's been in a sauna, right? Well, the Lodge at Woodlock has something different that they added. Come check it out. After you spend some time in the sauna, you come into the snow room. Whew. This is the first of its kind on the East Coast. You wear sandals, you breathe in cool air. It is absolutely refreshing for the body and mind. This holistic method of temperature changing brings your body back into balance. It is an exhilarating experience that leaves you feeling totally relaxed. After your therapy, continue your spa service in one of the post-treatment relaxation rooms where you can enjoy the lasting benefits of the snow room. So far, we've shown you some of the most amazing spa services in the Pocono Mountains. But what about the classic massage? Nah, wait until you see some of the most unique spa treatments around. The French Manor is an inviting place to visit if you want to have a girls getaway weekend or enjoy a romantic, delicious meal. If you've never had a warm bamboo massage, today's the day. It helps to relax and detoxify muscles in your body. It's just what a girl needs to forget about all the daily troubles. The French Manor Inn has an amazing salt water pool. This beautiful setting doesn't smell of chlorine. The salt naturally cleanses the water, and the salt water is excellent for making your skin soft while you enjoy a relaxing dip in the pool. That was just a quick tour of some of the most amazing spas in the Pocono Mountains. Experience a new inner peace with some of the world's best spa therapies right here in the Poconos. Visit PoconoMountains.com. Mm. Oh, hey, it's Jim Hamill here with Pocono Mountains Magazine. Still to come on the show, we are at Three Hammers Winery. 
they have a whole new offering here that doesn't necessarily pour from the bottle. It's delicious. We'll explain coming up. We're exploring another small town in the Poconos. What to expect from a day in Delaware water game. Jim Hemmel and Brandis Trunk will be right back with more Pocono Mountains Magazine. A special thanks to our sponsors, St. Luke's Monroe Campus, East Strasburg University, and Lehigh Valley Hospital, Pocono. What's happening here? So we're really excited. We've been making snow since last week, and as you can tell, they've been doing All right, and let's head on over to the fair president. What is this all about here? Sure, so right now we're on our, what we would call the buddy floor. This is pretty interesting too, Chris. Pitt Road includes at least nine crew members who are Pennsylvania natives. Welcome to Delaware Water Gap. Known as the gateway to the Pocono Mountains, this is the first small town you'll encounter over the New Jersey border. And it has a little bit of everything. Small shops and eateries, a vibrant art and music scene, hiking on the Appalachian Trail, and easy access to the Delaware River, plus the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area. Let's go see what a day in Delaware Water Gap is all about. Welcome to the Village Farmer and Bakery. Uh, I'm Susan Cooper, I'm the owner. Been, we've built this bakery over 45 years. We're starting our 46th year. We have pies made from scratch. We have all kinds of pastries. One of our top sellers is our pot pies. All year round, we have local products from different areas. We make our own doughs, the pie dough, the pie tops, the crumbs that go on the top. We don't use any canned fillings or pre-cooked fillings. The fruit goes in and is cooked right in the pie shell. It's an old-fashioned pie, that's what it's called. So we're very unique in that way. Because we've been here so many years, it's been the honor of being multi-generational. So the people who came here first with their parents are now bringing their children. We just love the fact that we are a destination for families and fun. Hi, I'm Deb Conwell. I'm the owner of Joe Bosco, Authentic Smokehouse Barbecue in the Delaware Water Gap. We emulate Central Texas. We have brisket, we have ribs, we have chicken, we have sausage, we have burgers. Everything is made from scratch every single day. Nothing is store-bought or frozen. Our sides don't take second seat. We do macaroni and cheese and coleslaw and potato salad and baked beans. And we also do everyday homemade desserts. My husband and I, prior to opening, we took a barbecue crawl 3,600 miles in nine days and went to every single barbecue restaurant across country that's very well known just to see what they were doing so we can know what to do and what not to do. We have garage doors in the spring and summer and when the weather permits that's open. That leads out to a back outside seating with a fireplace. I'd like to accomplish a hug, like they're coming into Grandma's kitchen. And I want everybody who comes in here to have an enjoyment, not just like a restaurant, but almost like a home, a family member that they're coming to dine with. After all that food, you might need a place to walk it off. One of the most scenic sections of the Appalachian Trail runs through Delaware Water Gap, and you might bump into some through hikers taking a rest here at the Appalachian Trail's oldest hiker hostel. Now, let's head across the street. Asparagus Sunshine is an eclectic blend of uh, vintage, antiques, upcycled, and also uh, local artisans, some souvenirs. I mean, there's not one word to describe Asparagus Sunshine. And there's nostalgia, and there's fun stuff, and it's just a, a feeling of things that you didn't know you needed. All of my newer products are locally sourced as much as we can, and if not, they're women-owned businesses and all small batch handmade. 
Asparagus Sunshine was my dad's band in the late 70s and 80s. It's fun, it's bright, it's cheerful, it's, you know, it's everything like that I kind of strive to be, so it's perfect and I get to remember my dad. Well, what is the Deer Head Inn? It's a home of jazz. It's in the Poconos for over 70 years. It's the longest continuously running jazz club in the country. There's been some great players. I mean, the list just goes on. It's a great place to come and listen to jazz. And you can eat some great food while you're doing it. And all they have to do is walk upstairs to uh, some beautiful rooms. Go online, find out more about us, DeerHeadInn.com. Hi, I'm Lindsay Kidwell, and I'm the co-owner of the Sycamore Grill in Delaware Water Gap, and we're a full-service restaurant and bar uh, serving delicious food, and we like to think with a side of Mountain Charm. The Delaware Water Gap has a rich history of music, and we like to play into that. In the original design of the restaurant, there was a New Orleans-type jazz feel. The restaurant has evolved from that, but we still do have live music on Friday nights. We serve a wide assortment of menu items from steaks and seafood to burgers and cheesesteaks. Our food items are made in-house, sauces, dressings. There's a lot of love behind the food that we serve. We have a small kitchen staff. We're a small family-run restaurant, and I think that it really shows in the food that we put out to the community. I'd like to welcome you to the Antoine Duteau Museum and Gallery in Delaware Water Gap. This building is a old school house. It was a school for 100 years. Upstairs, we have a museum and restored 1930s era classroom. And downstairs, we have uh, a fine arts gallery with rotating art shows. Well, this is resort memorabilia that uh, has been donated to our organization. For instance, there's a case on the uh, Water Gap House and the Kittatinny House, some of the big resorts, and as well as um, some of the pictures of celebrities that came here to vacation. Our season is from Memorial Day through uh, Columbus Day weekend. We're open on the weekends. By the memorabilia we have and uh, the old postcards and things like that, we preserve that history for people to, uh, to look at. In its heyday, Delaware Water Gap hosted half a million tourists each year as the country's second most visited inland destination. Today, one of the original resorts still stands, now offering a wedding venue, small shops, a vintage ice cream emporium, and guided historic tours. One of the unique things about the Castle Inn was it was the first hotel in the area built with electricity. So it had all the modern amenities that you could possibly have in 1907. The apothecary, or where we have our ice cream uh, emporium, was there with a, with a soda fountain. After the Castle Inn passed through its days of, of, of being a hotel, which ended sometime during the 1940s, Fred Waring purchased the property approximately around 1950. He ran his music publishing business here. Upstairs, the rooms were converted to offices that included musicians who had uh, pianos to bang out the score of uh, an arrangement they were making, as well as people who did sales and book tours for the Pennsylvanians musical group that, that Fred Waring ran as well. From songs to sightseeing, just outside the Castle Inn, you can step on a seasonal narrated trolley tour to learn even more about the area's history. This was one of the original trolley stops from the early 1900s. So we figured since it's a historical trolley that we would bring it back to its original historic location. It's so rewarding when I see all these smiling faces coming off and they tell me how much they enjoyed the tour and how much they enjoyed the history of the tour. That brings a lot to me. That, makes, that means everything to me. That's one of the great seasonal attractions here. And when Delaware Water Gap especially comes to life in the warmer months, be sure to check out Edge of the Woods Outfitters for all your bike rental and river trip needs. We hope to see you soon for a day in Delaware Water Gap. With the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strzok. Hey everyone, it's Jim Hamill and we are here at Three Hammers Winery in Holly. And we all know we can get our wine tastings here or get a bottle or white or red for 
going home, but now you can have an entirely new food and wine experience here with a new chef at Barrel and Table. Plus in the historic farmhouse, there's a space all unto yourself downstairs in the speakeasy. Let's go find out more. We're definitely offering something very different for the area. You know, we're still uh, utilizing all the local farms that I built connections with over the last 10 years. A lot, of, a lot of the farmers have become my friends and, you know, we're introducing that into the Three Hammers philosophy. Executive chef and culinary creative director Josh Thompson is carving out a name for Barrel and Table at Three Hammers Winery. In the kitchen, Thompson has a knack at combining ingredients to satisfy any taste buds, and now with the added ingredient of Three Hammers wine. Together, they bring out flavors in each other. A perfect pairing. It's more of an experience. So you're gonna get the wine experience and the food experience, and it's a little collaboration on my behalf and Three Hammers wineries. From the looks, smells, and tastes of things, Three Hammers and Chef Thompson are onto something. Winemaker Hillary Gary is in her 12th harvest. That's 12 vintages with Three Hammers. And the addition of Barrel and Table has her beyond excited. We have definitely increased wine sales by doing it, but the, the, the experience itself is, I have not seen anything like it in the area. It's really special to be able to, to come and do a pairing, um, see the chef, see the winemaker, um, have them hand in hand. Um, it's a pretty cool experience. Flights and Bites is one of the ways to experience barrel and table, four courses paired with four wines. While PTN was there, Chef Thompson shared a sample. This is a Pennsylvania whole wheat cavatelli. So we got local farm greens from Lato Sud Farm and Beach Lake. Uh, we have uh, oven dried tomatoes from uh, a late season harvest. We actually preserved these, we saved them. And then we just made like a simple base of uh, clams, a little bit of uh, the Three Hammers Viennier wine for the white wine, a little bit of a roasted garlic, a touch of uh, farm cream, and you know, we're just gonna finish it off here. And we'll play it up so we can try it today. Mm. Flights and Bites were only just the first course in this new endeavor at the winery. Globe dining in the cooler months makes for a magical experience for anyone who loves food and wine. Check it out, our Deanna Fontanez was there recently and posted this to Instagram. Hey everyone, Deanna Fontanez here from PTN. I'm at Lake Wall and Palm Pack for a girls weekend and we decided to come to Three Hammers Winery for their Globe experience. The Globe dining experience. Right outside, it's a nice heated globe and we're offering uh, five courses in the globes paired with five different wines and we'll have somebody talk about the wines, I'll talk about the food and we'll talk about how we came up with the menu together. Plus, in the historic farmhouse, this space is all yours for a special experience, a speakeasy experience. Here we are in the farmhouse speakeasy, uh, which you are able to rent out for special occasions, birthdays, anniversary, any special occasion coming up for you. Special indeed. And just like the food and the wine bring out the best in each other, so too do the minds and careful hands crafting them. Just one more way Three Hammers is giving its loyal followers and first-time visitors something to savor. To learn more, threehammerswinery.com has all you'll need to experience the new barrel and table. Cheers. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. This Women Veterans Museum is one of two dozen projects that recently received a financial boost and now plenty of others can come to life. We'll show you how coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Still to come on Pocono Mountains Magazine, there are lots of different ways that you can spot some bald eagles along the Delaware River in the Pocono Mountains. We'll show you one of those ways still to come. New to select Pocono ski resorts is Ski Tex, a great new way for us to communicate with our guests. To learn more, go to PoconoSki.com. It's Jim Hamill, and each and every winter, the Delaware Highlands Conservancy hosts some Eagle Watch bus tours right here along the Delaware River. That's because this time of year, the waters freeze way up north. 
and a lot of bald eagles come down to our area to find a bite to eat. So we want to go along for those bus tours to see if we could catch a glimpse of those majestic eagles right here in the Poconos. Check it out. On a frigid January day, this bus filled up fast in Lackawaxen. These folks all bargaining for a tour through the Delaware River watershed in search of bald eagles. For me, it's an awesome opportunity to be able to spread awareness to not only eagles, but um, different environmental issues. And um, it's just a good avenue for um, getting people excited about the environment. Keep an eye out at these big windows. And Rachel Morrow organizes the tours for the Delaware Highlands Conservancy over two months. She also coordinates the volunteers like Brad who lend their expertise and knowledge along this several hour experience. It's awesome to watch them also interact with the public and sharing their stories and watching the fascination of everybody. I'm um, listening to these volunteers who have been here for 20 plus years and all of the things that they've seen. As the bus winds through the river region, it reaches one blind where there have been many sightings. This is a pretty popular spot. Last Sunday, between the morning shift and the afternoon shift, we had 44 sightings. Armed with binoculars, cameras with big lenses, and dressed for the cold, these tour participants are eager to see eagles, or at the very least, learn about them, their habitat, and appreciate the Delaware River region right here in the Poconos. It's really special. I mean, you know, you can look at a lot of birds and see a lot of little birds, but th these things are, are big, uh, big, big things to look at, and uh, they're interesting to learn about, and they teach you all that on the bus. So our bus tours, they do fill up very fast, um, so if you're looking to get on a bus the week before it sets off, like, you're probably not going to get on the bus, unfortunately. We wish we could bring everybody on the bus, um, but we only have so many seats that we can offer. On this trip, bald eagles were a little hard to come by at the first couple stops. Then, when the bus pulled back into the Zane Gray Museum in Lackawaxen, it was the payoff everyone was hoping for. A couple of eagles soaring high over the confluence of the Lackawaxen and Delaware rivers. I mean, the good news is uh, here we are at the Zane Gray Museum and uh, we're seeing a lot of eagles. If the bus tours are filled up this year, put the Eagle Watch tours on your calendar for next year and visit DelawareHighlands.org to learn more. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Coming up, a women veterans museum, skate park, playground, and passenger rail car. Find out what they all have in common. We'll meet farmer Zach Jones, part of an agro legacy in Wayne County. You won't want to miss his story about farming and how it's changed over the years. East Stroudsburg University. Dozens of degree opportunities taught by exceptional faculty. Exciting campus life and the beauty of the Poconos. ESU, where everything you want is closer than you think. Want to learn to ski and snowboard? Go to Poconoski.com. How has farming changed for your, you and your family? Yeah. So this used to be a dairy farm, and um, as the industry, dairy industry has gone through uh, quite a spiral, uh, it was no longer a dairy farm. They closed out and switched to beef cows. Does it concern you that families are getting out of farming? And have you been seeing that a lot lately yes. over the last 20 years? Yes, it's very concerning. Um, just as a local food supply, uh, you know, it takes, it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a lot of farms to raise a village. And it takes a lot of food to help people. And the more that you can have local, uh, better access to quality, fresh stuff really matters. I wake up in the morning in this great blue state, golden finger. So we're here with Zach Jones. You're watching Pocono Perspectives. 
We're one of the farms in Wayne County. We're talking about farming. There'll be a series of these. Uh, we're talking to families who've been farming for decades. So, Zach, I, I really want to thank you for being here with us. I've really been looking forward to this. A lot of stuff going on now in the world with inflation, with supply chain issues that have happened over the last two years. So one of the things I wanted to ask you is, at, at this point in time, in August of 2022, we're hearing a lot about droughts in, in, in the Midwest and the West. Are, are we experiencing that here in the east? And, and how do you feel about what's happening in the west with water and how will that affect agriculture? Water is the number one thing that life needs to survive. And without it, there is no life. So it is extremely concerning. Um, you, we are not, I guess, in a drought. We are dry, very dry. Uh, we haven't had rain. Yesterday was the first rain we had in about three weeks. So a lot of our stuff has not really been able to put fruit out takes a lot of water to do that. So when you think of food and you think of a tomato, for say, that's like 80% water. So without that water, it's not gonna grow. So you, you uh, referenced fruit. Can you get into that a little bit more? Just everybody who's watching might not know what that really Okay, means. so fruit would just mean like the actual thing that you eat. So when I say fruits, it could be grains on, uh, a stalk of corn, and an ear of corn could be the grain, it could be wheat even. The fruiting body that would be the uh, reproductive aspect of that plant. So Zach, tell us about what you're farming here. What, what are you traditionally growing here? So right now we are growing uh, diverse vegetables, so all different kinds of vegetables, and we also have beef cows. What, what types of vegetables? We have tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, lettuce. Uh, we have eggplants, all kinds of stuff that you would see normally in a, a grocery store or a farmer's market. So where are they sold? So we sell uh, our local, one of our local farmer's markets in Newfoundland. We also sell here on the farm and uh, sell some through Facebook too. The local community buys a lot of uh, produce from, from you guys mm -hmm. oh, at, yeah. at the farmer's markets and comes here to do that as well? Yeah, yep. So what was the, when you transitioned from a dairy farm to, to where you're at right now, when did that happen? That actually happened in 1983. My great-grandfather and his brother uh, retired. They decided that at that point they were going to live life and not work as much anymore. So in 1983 they had an auction right here on the farm and sold all the milk cows. Zach, one of the things that's really fascinated me when we first talked was that this farm has been in your family for generations. So can you walk us through that? You know, how that all started from the year that you think it started into where we are right now? Sure, yeah, so we think somewhere around the early 1900s. We believe in 1920, the uh, house that my parents owned was built and they had been farming there uh, at that time. So I guess the, the most concrete answer I could give is 1919. So going back to 1919, what did the farm look like then? What, what did your great-grandfather do here on the farm? So my great-great-grandfather. 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 What was his name? Charles. Charles Robinson. And uh, he actually had beef cows back in the early 1900s. This was a beef farm, and he was a logger. He owned the mountain and logged that. The mountain that's, clo that's on the farm here? Right. Close to the farm. Ne right next door, actually. Uh, if you look at it, you'll see. It's a state game lands now, but he owned 1,500 acres and he logged that and he sold timber. Oh wow, so he did that in addition to working on the farm. Oh yeah. And what, what was planted here at the time? Oh, uh, it was just hay. And I think they might have done some small grains back then just to feed the cows. Did they sustain themselves from the farm totally? So did they plant everything they ate and can it and do all those kind of things? Oh yeah, my great-great-grandmother was quite a lady. She uh, fed a house full of 14 people on an old wood cook stove. Yeah, she made everything, so. So then how did it transition from your great-great-grandfather to kind of where we're at right now, where you are? Okay, so my great-great-grandfather uh, gave the farm to my great-grandfather when he was uh, probably in his 20s and realized that it could only be sustained by one family, so my great-great grandfather passed it on to his son and actually two of his sons. So how many acres was it then and is it now? Is it still the same size? It is the same size that it was when uh, in the 80s, so it's 200 acres. So tell me about your uncle. So my uncle actually bought the farm uh, when my great-grandfather passed away, but he worked with my great-grandfather milking cows 
how did it transition back to you and your parents and then you then? So my great-grandfather uh, leased the farm out to local farmers and then my uncle decided he wanted to get into farming and in 2003 my great-grandfather passed away and when he passed away my uncle and my aunt bought the farm. So how did he decide that he wanted to get back into farming? Was it just something he felt was in his blood and he missed? You step in manure and it sticks to your boots for the rest of your life, you can't get it off. <laughs> did he try anything else? Did he try any, anything else? Well, he has horses and he had horses and so he actually needed to do hay. So I, this is the perfect spot to do it. So he decided to start doing hay. They planted corn, oats, uh, different kind of clover and one thing led to another and now we have vegetables. I, I would assume that equipment has really changed dramatically how farms are run, correct? In some aspects, yes, yes. Uh, there's been updates in equipment and then sometimes you go back to some original concepts. What's an original concept versus doing something with equipment? A uh, good example is that a uh, hay baler, so a small square baler. The knotting system that was designed in that, to tie these knots on these square bales was designed in the early 1900s. That has not changed. The baler that we run is from the 60s. It's uh, quite old, but it's good and it works. So I've been told that farmers could fix or maintain anything. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So you fix everything that breaks down. It doesn't go anywhere else. Uh, we do as much as we possibly can, yeah. Some farmers have additional occupations to farming, right, Zach? Is oh, yeah. That, and yeah. and what, what usually are they and what do you do? I work for the conservation district. I work for Wayne County. I'm the nutrient management specialist, so I actually work with other farmers in uh, getting in compliance with uh, Department of Environmental Protection regarding like clean streams and erosion and stuff like that. So does that have to do with how much um, fertilizer is used or uh, nutrients for soil? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So different fertilizers, manure especially, we want to make sure that our water stays clean. In the Pocono Mountains, we're extremely lucky to have one of the cleanest rivers in the world, the Delaware, and it is exceptional value and high quality, so we want to keep it that way. That's awesome to know that you're, you're helping to keep that clean. Um, I did want to ask this though, how much is farming science of nutrients and all those types of things? Uh, I'm probably not asking the question the right way, but I think you kind of know what I mean. I do, yeah. How, what, what, how do you do that? How do you, how do you go about that? So I, I listen to a lot of information. I'm constantly learning and the science behind it is insane. It's chemistry and biology, but without biology, there's no chemistry. So in order to grow something really good, we have to focus on what's already living and making it that much better, uh, especially within the soil, all the micro and macro invertebrates that live there, the fungi, the bacteria, stuff like that. That's ultimately what makes a tomato taste better, really. So what's your educational background? So I went to college, but I went to college for recreation services management. Uh, I never really thought about doing anything farming until I graduated college, actually. Where'd you graduate from? I went to uh, East Stroudsburg University. Ah, so you decided that you wanted to go in a different direction versus farming. Yeah. So what called you back? I think you, I know what you might well, say, but what, what, what made you come back? I really learned who I was when I was in college and what, what mattered to me. And my values always come back to this farm and my family. So I wanted to come back and I wanted to be a part of it and I wanted to do my own thing and, and make, expand it. What family lives on the farm now? Your family, right? Yes, so my mom and dad live next door to me. I live there with my kids, and then my grandma and grandpa live next door to me. I live in the middle. How old are your kids? I, uh, he's seven months old, and then seven, nine, and 16. Oh, wow, dude, the seven, nine, and 16, how do they feel about living on a farm? They like it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of work to do, but they, uh, they enjoy the open space. Do they have their chores every day? Yeah, sometimes, uh, yeah, especially <laughs> in the summertime. Uh, so, um, how, how do you think, do you think that there'll be another generation here on the farm? I hope so. Uh, I won't push it. You know, if that's what they want to do, then I, I fully support it. But if they decide to do other things, that's acceptable as well. Uh, I'd like to see this continue and be a farm. So do you want to operate this for the rest of your life, right? This yeah, is something you want to do. until I want to retire and live on a beach. One of these days, <laughs> maybe years from now. So what, is your dad retired? Is no. He, no, he's, so he's working the farm too. Yep. Wow, so how many people does it take to work 200 acres? A I lot, mean, my entire sure. family. So we, I'm, we're extremely fortunate that we have my mom, my, my dad, my aunts, my uncles. Uh, it's a true family farm. Everybody here pitches in. What were your challenges this year in 2022? 
So this year was exceptionally dry and it made things extremely difficult, uh, which didn't allow a lot of the uh, vegetables to grow or the hay to grow as good as it could. If we get enough precipitation from now until the end of the season, will we catch up? I mean, as far as the farm here, will you catch up? Well, annually we'll catch up. Unfortunately, what's, uh, what we missed, we missed. I'm sure we'll get all of it in hurricane season in the September, but yeah, we needed it in June and July. Is that going to affect your crop yield at all? Oh yeah. yeah how, we, do, how does it? We lost a lot of yield. A lot of tomatoes actually got what's called blossom end rot, which is actually a calcium deficiency, but there was adequate calcium, it just wasn't enough water to move the calcium into the fruit itself, so it ended up having to throw it out because it was rotten. Do you irrigate at all? Here? We do, yeah. We have uh, underground drip tape that we irrigate with. Oh, what is that? So that's just a plastic tube that has a small slit every 12 inches that once it hits a certain PSI, it will just have a little drop of water that comes out. So that I don't have to waste any water, I can direct it right to the root of that plant. How, of the 200 acres, how much is actually that 200 devoted to growing completely? To completely, so there's about 75 acres in fields and we probably do two to two and a half acres of vegetables, so roughly 70 acres of hay. And irrigation, how much water does it take to irrigate that? A good example is a tomato plant needs about uh, a gallon a week or more, depending on how dry it is and how the soil, uh, if it's holding water or not. So in a normal year of precipitation, how much of a crop would you yield and how much do you think you'll yield, yield this year because of the lack of water? So a good example is I strive for 20 pounds of tomatoes per plant and this year I'll be lucky if I get like 12. Oh, so it's pretty, it's substantial, it's yeah. almost half. And I've been irrigating, it just couldn't, I couldn't keep up with it. Yeah. Before we close, and this has been really great, Zach, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing, you know, about your family, but I think what we want people to know is the devotion it takes to farm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted you to talk a little bit about that, the sacrifices that your family, you know, over the generations have given us so that we can eat. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to us a little bit about that. A lot of missed baseball count? games. I miss a lot of stuff. I'm working. I work all day long, every day. Drink our coffee as quick as you can and then you immediately head out, uh, start irrigating, turn the water on for things in the greenhouse and the high tunnel and outside and just checking on things and then you have to get dressed quick to go to work. And once you get home from work, then you gotta start all over, uh, take care of the animals, cows, and make sure whatever field work needs to get done, you do it when the sun's shining. And then on weekends, I work from sun up to sundown, just about. So no matter what, the cows have to be taken care of every day. Every day. Any other animals here? There's a couple goats and some turkeys, but they, uh, they're inside, which is nice, and they're pretty easy to take care of. Because you always think about a farm having animals everywhere. It's like, it's all like old McDonald here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, getting back to the sacrifice uh, before we close, talk to me about what farming has meant to your family, because you talked about values, which I think is really important, but what has farming meant to your family, and has the sacrifice been worth it? Yes, it's, it's hard. Um, there's fights, there's arguments, there's happy times. Sometimes you're happy you get to work with your family and then sometimes it's difficult to work with your family, but I feel fortunate to spend that much time with my family. Uh, we do everything together. We, we work, we hang out, we eat. We like to have supper together a lot, which is one of the things that I always loved as a kid. And um, you know, I get to continue that tradition now. Well. That's really what life's all about, you know, family and country and all the things you've done here and you've really helped us, um, feeding us all these decades and a century. So it's been over two, 100 years. Mm -hmm. And we really, really thank you for that, Zach. And um, This has been Pocono Perspectives. We're coming from Wayne County. Uh, this is Zach Jones. He talked to us about a farm that has been in, in his family for over 100 years and we've really enjoyed it. Zach, thank you so much. Thank you. And as always, Thank you for watching PTN, the Pocono Television Network. More than 70 artists represented with a thousand pieces of art like this one under one roof. It's the Art Factory of White Mills, and we'll give you a tour of the place coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine.
It just goes to show what can be done if you have the right surgeons and the right doctors. Because I was concerned with the mass that I saw in her abdomen, I knew she just needed to go to surgery as soon as possible. The diagnosis was one cancer appendiceal, and whatever need I would have, I knew she was going to address it. That impressed me. At the Lehigh Valley Topper Cancer Institute, we have a team of experts who are specialty trained in their field. Best word I can find, phenomenal. been enjoying places in the Poconos recently without realizing their new enhancements were supported by a grant program from the Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau. The Community Impact Grant was founded in 2022 and at that time awarded nearly $300,000 among 24 community projects. And now that grant program is back. Local governments are invited to apply for funding for projects aimed at enhancing the quality of life in communities across the Poconos. The deadline to apply is March 3rd. You can find more information on PoconoMountains.com slash grants. But in the meantime, we wanted to take a look back at some of the projects funded last year. Let's go check it out. This is really my favorite showcase. The Women Veterans Museum in Mount Pocono houses military artifacts dating back to 1934. Every uniform, backpack, book, and picture tells the story of local women who served. When passion takes over, it takes very short amount of time. So it took five months for us to create the museum and put that display together and say no longer will women be invisible. Museum CEO Claudette Williams also known as retired Sergeant Major Claudette Williams, served tours overseas in places such as Kuwait and Afghanistan. Her reason for founding this place is personal. Serving uh, 30 years in the military, a United States Army, and going places and showing your ID, and, you know, you get the question, where did your husband serve? The PMVB Community Impact Grant provided $10,000 to fund new flagpoles and lighting, display cases, and this statue honoring fallen soldiers. I mean, we were screaming, I should say, when we received the letter that said you have received the grant. In another part of Monroe County, the Middle Smithfield Township Community and Cultural Center received $20,000 for two electronic signs, plus an interactive kiosk. Middle Smithfield tends to be the gateway to the National Park. We are the busiest entrance to the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area. So we can certainly help visitors find their way to our local restaurants and stores that way. Opened in 2021, the Community and Cultural Center is home to a library, exhibit space, and a community room, which hosts programs for all ages. The building also serves as a Red Cross certified emergency shelter. Middle Smithfield Township is set up a bit differently than other boroughs and townships. It's not walkable. You cannot walk from one end to the other end of 209 in our, our six mile long township. So we really needed a center, something to center the whole community around. Over in Waymart, a new platform was purchased through grant funding, making this restored open air gravity rail car accessible to visitors. In the 1800s, tourists would ride a passenger car like this one to the nearby Fairview Observatory, which boasted picnic areas and scenic views. People came from all over, from Scranton, Wilkes-Barre and everything to come and ride on this passenger car because it wasn't the new technology of those days. Before becoming an amusement, the Delaware and Hudson Gravity Railroad was created to transport anthracite coal between Carbondale and Honesdale. Coal was then transferred to the New York market by a canal boat, fueling the Industrial Revolution. The last surviving DNH Gravity Railroad Depot is now home to the Waymart Area Historical Society and Museum. The artifacts on display, plus this passenger car outside, help preserve history for generations to come. I drive by probably five times a day, and there's always people climbing up here, getting on the car, just seeing how neat it is. In another part of Wayne County, a mural project is set to liven up the skate park at Bingham Park in Holly. Silhouettes of skateboarders photographed in the park will wrap around each ramp, becoming blank canvases for student artists. 
when kids have a little bit of skin in the game, then they tend to be more respectful, will actually utilize the space more, um, and uh, because they'll feel invested in something that's within their community. From paint to pavement in Carbon County, the Jim Thorpe Memorial received parking upgrades so visitors can easily pay their respects to the borough's Olympic namesake. I think that it's well overdue. I mean, when I went there to visit Grandpa, I'd have to park in the dirt and, you know, and then sometimes I wasn't able to park in the dirt because there's so many daggum cars there. So it, it's a necessary thing, I believe, uh, just to give people access to the mausoleum. There's so much information there about Grandpa and so much that people want to learn about him. And with that parking, I think it's going to make it a little easier and a little more accessible. And in Pike County, 12 new trash cans line Milford's business district, replacing these outdated ones. A local architect created the custom cans, the tree a fitting design since Milford is known as the birthplace of America's conservation movement. Its famous Gray Towers was home to the U.S. Forest Service's founder and first chief. We are a community that relies on tourism, and if the streets aren't inviting, if there's trash on the sidewalks and things, it's just not an inviting place to stop. The cans are durable, easy for crews to empty, and prevent people from dumping bags of household trash. They were made possible through a $14,000 grant, plus the generosity of local businesses, including the Dimmick Inn and Milford Hospitality Group. And we really wanted something that could be aesthetically appealing as much as a garbage can can be. <laughs> uh, and I think I think we accomplished that. They're, they're, it's a really beautiful design and we're very happy with it. Hey. New playground equipment at TLC Park in Pocono Township, empty space converted into a community hub at the Newfoundland Library, planters to hold the popular snowmen of Stroudsburg, beautification projects across several small towns, and so much more. The PMVB Community Impact Grant has left its mark throughout the Pocono Mountains for projects to be enjoyed by locals and visitors alike. With the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Coming up, the place where you can find more than 1,000 pieces of art under one roof from 70 different artists. Meet the couple behind the Art Factory and experience unlike any other. The team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. And I, I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. Hey everyone, it's Jim Hamill. We talk a lot about the Pocono towns of Honesdale and Holly on Pocono Television Network, but smack dab in the middle on Route 6 is White Mills, and behind me, the art factory of White Mills. So we want to introduce you to the owners and explore the historic property here along Route 6 in Wayne County in White Mills. Come on along. Morning, Jim. Welcome to the Art Factory of White Mills. Thanks for having us, Jerry. Would you show us around? Certainly, come on in. What we have here is uh, a gallery that's built for local artists. And we have over 70 artists. There's over 1,000 pieces. Just meet Jerry Davis and his wife, Cindy, at their Art Factory of White Mills, and you'll soon learn how much they love art and love sharing it with others. This is our classroom. We offer workshops. We do artist meetings here. We entertain from here. The historic building is home to workshops for all ability levels. And around every corner is a new find, a different take on artistic expression. And this couple, owners of the art factory for a dozen years now, wouldn't have it any other way. We're very passionate about it. This is our life. Um, from May through December, we're open seven days a week from 10 to 5, and it's Jerry and I that run the gallery, so we are here seven days a week. 
During winter, the factory does close on Wednesdays, but every other day of the week is another chance to appreciate a different artist, a different medium, and soak in all the history inside this former textile factory now filled with works of art. The building's 110 years old. Uh, it was a meeting hall back when it was created. And from what we know, uh, they had roller skating upstairs and basketball games and sock hop dancing and public theater downstairs. From meeting hall to garment factory and now art hub for art lovers and artists. All while the art scene keeps growing in neighboring Honesdale and Holly, the art factory is right in the middle of it all. While the artist is waiting to sell their art, we try to help them by offering classes in their genre. So we offer acrylic painting, alcohol ink, acrylic pour, um, printmaking. What am I forgetting? Stained glass. Stained glass, oh, sorry. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Jerry and Cindy are chuckling because Jerry's stained glass is here too. His passion for it shines, and the couple strives to make sure people take notice and stop in to appreciate all the art and the community they've built here. We meet and greet everybody. You know, this is a real mom and pop business, but this is our home. This is an extension of who Jerry and I are, so I think it really reflects that. And so when you come in, we strike up a conversation. We know where you're from. We know how many kids you have. We know why you're here. You know, we try to guide you. We tell the artist's story for them because they're not here to tell it themselves. Hopefully when you leave, you leave saying, oh, that was a really nice experience. Find your Art Factory experience in person or give them a follow on social media at the Art Factory of White Mills. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Another great story from Jim Hamill, and that's a great place to pick out some unique Valentine's Day gifts. Speaking of Valentine's Day, we are back here at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions in the Honeymoon Suite where you can find one of those iconic heart-shaped tubs. It is a busy month here in the Poconos between Valentine's Day and then President's Day weekend. You can check out all of our events, special packages and offers over on PoconoMountains.com. And remember, you can watch the Pocono Television Network anytime, anywhere. Thanks so much for joining us for this February edition of Pocono Mountains Magazine. We'll see you again next month.